Welcome to Pentecostal Preaching Channel. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy what you see. Hit the bell to be notified when something new is uploaded. Have a great day. Very fine church in Kurt Andover, New Brunswick. And he comes this morning with a message from one of our strongest districts in the United Pentecostal Church. Many of you are in Texas and aware of the fact that there are strong districts surrounding you like Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas, and may not know that up in the eastern part of our fellowship, way up in the east, is a great shouting and blessed camp meeting and a great fellowship of preachers that love this doctrine. And we're very happy to introduce Pastor and District Superintendent Harry Lewis to you this morning. God bless him as he speaks. Will you give him an amen and a praise the Lord when he comes? Shall we stand to read the word of the Lord this morning, 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 11. It came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven and elijah saw it and he cried my father my father the chariot of israel and the horsemen thereof and he saw him no more he saw him no more and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. Took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him. Went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the water. And said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the water, they parted hither and thither. I wondered for a while as I was studying this if hither and thither, thither wasn't the Hebrew for right and left. <laughs> Until I'm proven otherwise, I'll have to accept that. The waters parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. Several years ago, I had the privilege of visiting one of the great historic places of America, Arlington National Cemetery, 420 acres, burial ground of the heroes for the American cause. There buried our tens of thousands, generals, admirals, presidents. I was completely overwhelmed as I stood, overcome by history. Not only was I impressed with the great cemetery, but in the midst, there was a tomb to the unknown soldier. Three young men, unknown, unidentified, are buried in the unknown tomb. One from World War I, World War II, and the Korean War. It is clearly depicted on the tomb that they were men who died for valor, victory, and peace, the tomb of the unknown soldier. This morning, I want to challenge you for the next few moments on this subject, defending the cause of heroes, defending the cause of heroes. God bless you. You may be seated. I'd like to be able to say that I've looked forward to this for a long time. The 72nd Annual Conference. I guess it'll be all right if it's 72 more years before I get invited to speak. <laughs> I want to talk to our hearts today. And it is in the providence of God that in all generations that God has given to us role models and has given us heroes to look to. A hero is one who distinguishes himself 
in spite of overwhelming odds and great adversity, motivated by the courage of his conviction, if I stand alone, I will confront this situation head on. Courage to become a hero. And there are many heroes that the Lord has given to us. I, I could go on here this morning and, and cite to you several different heroes that make my heart beat and the blood course through my veins with excitement as I see men that'll stand. I think of that big burly heathen that beat his chest morning and evening and said, I defy the armies of the God of Israel. This he did twice a day for 40 days. And Saul's armies cowered down behind their show of weakness. David came by and said, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? The old guy said, Give me a man that we may fight together. And David said, I'll be the man. And I like the fact that David got to the brook and got the stones. The brook was the halfway mark between the mountains, and David got there ahead of him, shorter legged, but he got there because he was anxious to do something about the situation. David was a hero, slew the giant. And the ladies all sang, he's ten times the man, the man that hides behind the stuff. I love heroes today. I love heroes. This is whole missionary day. Home Missions has provided some of the great heroes of our day. I thank God for every home missionary that has blasted out in our homeland great works. I thank God for the service tomorrow on foreign missions. Our heroes. I think of a little old Canadian boy that was dropped down in the heart of South America, in the city of Manaus, in the mid-60s, when a land that was shrouded with spiritual darkness this lone man and his wife touched down in Manaus. And now some 30-some years later, we have seen this man who tells us these words. My address hasn't changed for over 30 years. He's kept the same house address. He stayed by the stuff through plane crashes. Our regional field supervisor yesterday told us that Benny DeMerchant has seen in that city over 55 United Pentecostal churches that were raised up. And up and down the Amazon River, over 500 United Pentecostal churches. I don't know how you rank people like this, but I rank them as my heroes. They're the heroes to my heart and to my soul. But this morning, I need to hasten to get to our character, the main character of our story, a man by the name of Elijah, called to the harvest at a critical time. You see, since the time of the death of Solomon, Israel was in regression spiritually. There were some nine kings that followed after Solomon, and they all did evil. They walked in the sins of Jeroboam in idolatrous conditions. There were people that did evil in the sight of the Lord. And it was said about this man, Ahab. It, Ahab had reigned for 20 and 2 years. That wicked man. The Bible says, And Ahab reigned 20 and 2 years and did evil in the sight of the Lord more than all that were before him. He walked in the sins of Jeroboam, did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings that were before him. And that old witch, devil-inspired, devil-possessed woman of his. He became the most wicked king in Israel for 22 years. They had uh, locked up the prophets of God in caves and fed them with bread and water. They had murdered Naboth and swindled his property from him. What a tremendous dark hour it was. Israel had gone to the ways of Baal building altars in the groves of Samaria. What a tremendous dark day. But our hero, it's time for our hero. It's time for the man of God. From the hills of Gilead, 
We do not know where he attended Bible college. We do not know who his pastor was. They tell us that the hills of Gilead were some 2,000 feet high, somewhere up in the hills. And some number of days before Ahab, there was a man up there, a mountain man, who had a storm brewing in his bosom that was concerned about the work of God. And God dealt with that man. He is going to be the hero of the hour. He was not your regular charismatic preacher. He did not wear a plastic smile. He did not attend a school where he, the art of almost saying something. We're living in a day today where some, it seems as though they almost say something, but don't quite come out and say it. I'd kind of like to have a man to come out and take the guesswork out of it. I'd like to know something about a certain sound. If the trumpet give a certain sound. I believe the United Pentecostal Church needs a, somebody that will give a certain sound and call black black and white white praise god art of almost saying something you know how that goes if you don't repent in a measure you'll be lost to a certain extent and go to a place too bad to name that was not the theology of elijah i don't know how quite to describe elijah it was said that his counterpart in the New Testament was John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the mild, wild man from the wilderness. He was the man dressed in a leather girdle. He ate grasshoppers and wild honey. And it said that Elijah was like him. The Bible does say that Elijah was a hairy man. And uh, I'm also a hairy man. My name is Harry Lewis. He was a hairy man. I hope I'm like Elijah in more ways than being a hairy man. I believe he was a tall, skinny man. He was probably as tall as R.D. Whalen. You say, how do you know that? Well, it says that he ran ahead of Ahab from Mount Moriah to Jezreel and outran the chariot. So I think he was a long, lean, hairy guy that stepped up the hills of Gilead and he came down into the realm where the idolatrous king and that terrible awful woman i can't get by that old thing i think she was the founder of the women's lip the women's fib <laughs> oh god don't let me say something at a national conference that i'll go home and feel bad about <clears throat> but i at our hotel and various places you see the way that the way that society has gone womanhood womanhood has lost their respect and the way they dress they really have let's let me put it this way many of the people of the world have lost their respect and that's why i thank god for our united pentecostal church and I thank God for our wonderful ladies in their modesty. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you something else in case I forget a little later on. I thank God for the young people in that young people service yesterday in their modesty and their zeal for the things of God. I think we got a pretty good future. I think our future looks quite secure as I saw a move of God among our young people yesterday. The old man of God steps out of the hills. He didn't look like a man ready to visit the palace, but he walks up to the palace. He kicks the door open, and he thunders into the palace, and the guard says, you can't come in here like this. He said, where's Ahab? And he walks up to the throne, and he looks at the man sits on the throne, backslidden, 22 years did evil in the sight of God and did more to provoke Israel than all that were before him. And the man of God said, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand. I like that prepositional phrase, before whom I stand. What are your credentials, Elijah? I'm 
standing before the Lord God of Israel at all times. And he said, Ahab, because of your sin, this place is going to get dry around here. According to the word of God, it's going to get dry around here. You're going to spit dust before this is all over. And he said, it's not going to rain until I say it's going to rain. According to my word. Oh, I love heroes. I love men like that. So how would that happen? He says, it's not going to rain until I say it's going to rain. He said of Samuel, and Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. I believe when the man of God speaks, God will back him up. <laughs> Glory to God. You said, ought not we to be afraid of the king and the queen and all the royal guards and all the chariots? If you can find me a man that can say, I'm standing before God and I've come to denounce the sin issues of the world, God will stand with that man and not one of his words will fall to the ground. Hallelujah. The Bible says that God led that old man from the palace to the brook, took the old man of God down to the brook and watered him there. The ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and brought him bread and, bread and flesh at night. God fed his children twice a day. We feed our horses twice a day. Maybe that's enough for us. Well, that went over big. Brought him down to the brook and fed him there. When the brook dried up, took him to a little old Gentile widow's home. And she said, I don't have very much. He said, give me what you got. Sound like a preacher. Give me the last slice of bread in the cupboard. And he said, the oil will not fail and the meal will not fail. The boy died. And the man of God that came from the mountains, and the man of God who stood ever before the Lord, stretched himself on the child three times, and the child rose up. That man of God went on to Mount Moriah. There were 850 false prophets there, and they carried on for all day long. And then Elijah, the man of God, made a 63-word prayer, and the fire came down from God out of heaven. And uh, then he prayed for rain after three years and six months, and it rained. Oh, I like this man of God. I like this man of God who is used by the Lord, a little bit old-fashioned, doesn't look the very best. In 15 years, after over 75 years of spiritual regression, one man turned the nation around. Hallelujah. I'm talking about here, host. One man with God turned the thing around. You can't stop the work of God. Thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell, it doesn't say that the church had gates. It doesn't say the church was on the defensive. It said hell was on the defensive. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Somebody was fussing the other day. Somebody was fussing the other day about somebody running the message down. And uh, what are they going to do about our message? What, what's going to happen when they ridicule this message that we love? I'm not worried about that, not at all. The Bible says you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. You're beating your gums if you're fighting this message in this church. You can't do anything against the truth, but you can do something for the truth. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God for the truth of the word. Let's clap our hands this morning. And I got some news for you. You can't stop the man of God. 
You can't stop the man of God in home mission. You can't stop the movement of this church and this message. Hallelujah. I'm old-fashioned this morning, and I don't apologize for that. I still believe that God calls men. I believe that God equips men, and I believe that God sends men. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. And you can't be sent from God unless you're first with God. And in the original of that Greek, it says, there was a man sent from the presence of God. John the Baptist was in the presence of God. Acts chapter 13, when the great message jumped the Jewish sense and went to the Gentiles, it said, the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Paul and Barnabas, so they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost. Oh, I still believe that God's able to call men and equip men and use men in this last hour. I believe that God's men can still get the Macedonia call. I believe that you can hear the voice of God come on over and help us. And I believe when you get over there, the devil's going to be there before you get there. And you might land up in the Philippian jail. But that's all right. Don't you worry about that at the darkest hour. You can pray and sing praises. And you can believe God for a jailbreak. You can pray for God to give an earthquake. Oh, thank God this morning for the power of this gospel. Five years into the ministry of Elijah, he needed a helper. First Kings 19 says that he chose Elisha. Now look at Elisha. He was out in the field working with a 12 yoke of oxen. He was plowing with the 12. There's more to that than meets the eye. First of all, Elisha obviously was a good business head. Anybody that could survive three and a half years of drought and still have an operation of 12 yoke of oxen was a survivor. Number two, he had a staff of 11, at least 11 others. He was in big business. Number three, he was a worker. He was out there working in the field. That was a mighty good, a mighty good resume for a young man that wants to become an assistant pastor. I don't think God's got any use for a pastor, assistant pastor, or anybody else who's lazy. <laughs> That's the gospel according to St. Louis. That would be L-E-W-I-S. And as he, as he was plowing, the Bible says that the man of God went by and cast the mantle on him. <laughs> this is the most impressive part of the whole story is the call of this young man. He was the call of, uh, uh, of this young man. I don't know what there was about this old mantle. It was something that the prophet slept in. It was dirty, smelly, dusty, and stained. And about the only time you ever hear about that mantle, it was either wrapped up and smoked the waters, and Elijah picked it up and smoked the waters. It just seemed as though that old mantle was being thrown around. And when it came on the shoulders of Elijah, the Bible says that he left the oxen, he ran after Elijah, Elijah, and ministered to him. And for 10 years, he poured water on the hands of Elijah. 10 years. Now, I'll get you a paraphrase what that 10 years of pouring water meant. That meant the making of the fire at the church. That meant sweeping the church floor. That meant cleaning the flushes in the bathroom. That meant taking out the garbage. That meant harnessing the mule. That meant doing everything that nobody else would do. That was his Bible college training. And the Bible says that if a man is faithful in a few things, God will make him ruler over greater things. That's a divine principle. You want to get ahead in the work of God? You do something. You do it to the best of your might. You go down there and you work and you drive buses. You teach Sunday school. You clean flushes. You do whatever. And you can't keep a man like that down if he loves God, loves truth, and got a good spirit. 
You can't keep a man like that down. That is a principle of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, for 10 years. Now, he could have, and I'm going to try to bring this train in now. For 10 years, he poured water followed an old man that was old-fashioned, stayed in the background. The other old man had his name published. He, the old man was set in his ways. And uh, so he, the old man said, Elisha, I'm going out of here. I'm going to heaven. Is there anything you want? And Elisha said, he said, I'd like to be your son. You see, his son would get a double portion of the inheritance and he said i'd like to be your son in the gospel and i'd like to i'd like to get a double portion of what you have and the bible says that as they went on their way and was talking that there were shared of fire horses of fire and a whirlwind came and took the old man of god up took him up ten long years he served Ten long years, he played second fiddle. Put up with old-fashioned ways, did every dirty job that was to be done. And now, the old man is God, and I'm waiting for my inheritance from his will. And all he gets is a dusty, stained, dirty old mantle that came floating back down to him. He said, is that all I get for ten years of faithful service? I guess it's time I had a business meeting. And there on the banks of the Jordan, a young man, a young man called a business meeting. And he said, I have here in this business meeting two coats. I have mine. It's a designer coat. It's a coat that was the coat of a professional. It has more color. It has better design. And it represents a new image. I have this coat. It's in my hands now to turn this thing around and do what I want. I can start something new in Israel. Fifteen years of this old man with an old mantle, an old-fashioned ways. He said, I've got my coat. I've got my agenda. I've got a brand new future for Israel. I can take my coat. And here's that old, faded, dusty, dirty, stained, old mantle lying there. And he said, got to make a decision here. Be it resolved. I'm going to take one or the other coat. What, that's my coat. We'll do this. What will that coat do? That old mantle? That old mantle will give direction to a nation when it's lost. That old mantle will lead a man where there's food. That old mantle will raise the dead. That old mantle will call fire down out of heaven. That old mantle will part the Jordan River. That old mantle will take you up from the tree from the, the of this old life and take you over to the glory world. And the Bible says that Elisha tore his coat up and reached down and took up the mantle of Elijah and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Praise God. I'm talking about the changing of the guard. I'm talking about the changing of the guard. I'm talking about defending those virtues of our heroes. I want to bear my soul to you this morning. I believe that we are in a time of transition. I sat in the general board meeting the other day and I said to one of the brethren seated beside me, I said the next five years is going to bring a lot of changes in this room. I saw the silver-haired elders as they were there. 